So we're finally going to be taking a look at the DOS machine once again. And that's because we're going to upgrade it. Also, I guess this technically makes it a DOS Sember video. I didn't plan it that way, but I guess, I guess it works out. So more specifically, we're going to be moving away from the AMD 5x86, which is just a souped up 486. And we're going to be moving to this lovely Pentium 133. Now, that's not to say the 5x86 has been bad. It's actually been pretty okay. It runs basically everything I'd want it to. Except that it definitely struggles to run some of the later 3D DOS games like Quake and Tomb Raider. So I just wanted something that would be a little bit more powerful to run those games better. And this Pentium is surely going to uh, do the task very well. So when I initially built the computer, I had it in my head that, oh, 486, that's the real DOS CPU. And for, I guess I thought, like, that would make it more accurate, like, more period correct somehow. And in my efforts to make this a period correct machine, I basically completely ignored the fact that, you know, the Pentium existed for, like, two whole years before Windows 95 came out. You want to know when this CPU came out? June of 95. Windows 95 came out in August of 95, so two whole months. Two whole months this CPU came out before 95. You want to know when the 5x86 came out? November of 95. So yeah, I wonder which is the more accurate one, hmm. The moral of the story here is that if it's a machine you actually want to use and have a lot of fun with, don't arbitrarily limit yourself. Now that my rant is out of the way, what are we actually going to do? Well, obviously we can't just drop the Pentium into a socket 3 board. That just isn't going to work. This is a socket 7 CPU, so we obviously have to change motherboards. So my goal is to basically just take the motherboard out, put in the new motherboard with the new CPU, and keep everything else the same, including the DOS and Windows 3.1 installation. And in theory, there shouldn't be any problems, and I should just be able to do a very simple in-place upgrade. Hopefully... No driver conflicts. And yes, I know it's dirty and it's yellowed, you don't need to tell me. So before we begin swapping out parts and stuff, we should probably take a look at what we're actually going to be swapping into the computer. And of course, I already showed this. This is a Pentium clocked at 133 megahertz. Uh, no MMX, just the original Pentium on socket seven. This should be a nice middle ground between being fast enough to run all the games that I want to on it and just being too fast to the point that it's just excess and it's just the CPU is just kind of going to waste. So this is the motherboard I plan to use. Now this board is made by PC Chips, which if you're familiar with the name, you probably are immediately thinking that this board is complete trash. Basically, to make a long story short, Go read up on it if you want to learn more, but PC Chips was pretty notorious for making low-quality motherboards that had questionable reliability, and on some other boards they might have also scammed customers by putting fake cash on some other boards. Most of that stuff was happening in the Socket 3 days, but they actually cleaned up their act a lot into the Socket 7 era, and this board actually isn't that bad. So this is a regular Socket 7 board, not a Super Socket 7, so... No 100 megahertz FSB or AGP slot, which makes it a good candidate for, you know, a slow Pentium machine like this. It has the TX Pro chipset, which I believe is just a rebadged Aladdin 4 chipset. 4 PCI, 3 ISA, pretty standard. And it has basically all the stuff you would want integrated. It also has a built-in sound chip, which we're not going to be using because I already have a dedicated sound card. It even has a PS2 keyboard port, which unfortunately I can't use because... Uh, the case doesn't have a cutout for it. And it actually takes two different kinds of RAM. You got your older 72 pin and your more modern SD RAM. And if you want the model number of this specific board, it's the M575 1 meg, which I think means 1 meg of L2 cache. My experiences with this board so far have been pretty good, so I'm not expecting really too many problems. Like I said, PC chips really turned around by this point, especially by late 1997 or 
maybe early 98. I can't tell exactly when this specific board was made, but their quality was definitely a lot better by that point. And I do have better Socket 7 motherboards I could use, but I feel like they'd kind of just be going to waste on such a slow machine. Now we could keep the same 72 pin RAM from the system currently, but we might as well upgrade to something a little bit more recent. So this is just 32 megabytes of SD RAM. There's not really a lot to talk about here, but this is the smallest capacity stick that I have, so. So I guess it's time we start swapping stuff out. So we should probably bust the machine open and start replacing stuff. So since it's been a little bit since I've shown the machine on the channel, I'll just go really quick through what's already in here. So obviously there's our 5x86. The motherboard, which I think also might be a PC chips board. I never really looked that far into it, but thinking about it might actually be one. Uh, there's 16 megabytes of RAM up here. A bunch of cables that are in the way. An 8 gig hard drive that I would like to upgrade to an SD card at some point, but I just haven't got around to it. And honestly, I don't feel like messing with it right now. And importantly, the expansion cards we have an S3 Verge DX for the graphics card. Originally, when I built the computer, I had this Cirrus Logic card, which is also a 3D accelerator, just like the Verge, although we're not utilizing the 3D capabilities. I switched to the S3 Verge because uh, it was faster in 2D than the Cirrus Logic card. This card was still fine, but I decided to just go with a little bit extra performance. We have the classic RTL 8139 Ethernet card, which was everywhere in the 90s. And we have an ESS Audio Drive 1868F, which is a pretty good Sound Blaster clone, at least in my opinion. I do technically have better sound cards than this now, but I don't, I don't mind the way it sounds. So I went ahead and prepped the board. Hopefully I set all the jumpers correctly. And I also went and found a Socket 7 heatsink that hopefully won't be too noisy. I'm just gonna skip the motherboard installation. I mean, you've seen this probably a bunch of times. There's not really any point in me wasting your time anymore. All right, I got it all put together and set up. So see if it works. Hey, there it is. Oh, whoops. Well, it went farther than I expected it to. <laughs> All right, let's hope everything loads correctly. Didn't see any problems. Let's see if a game works. Try a more advanced game. So, Need for Speed. So, I'm curious to see how the performance is gonna compare. All right, let's see how this performs. Should be a lot better. Oh yeah, that's a lot better at 640 by 480. You can actually see what the gauges read. <laughs> it's not the fastest at 640 by 480, but still, it's, it's a lot better than it was on the 5x86. <clears throat> now, the real test is going to be, did Windows break? Ooh, uh, that's not good. So guess who just lost their whole Windows installation and they spent like an hour trying to reinstall everything and get it working, but the graphics card driver just wouldn't work and the setup kept saying it was running out of memory and would not let me go back to the basic VGA driver, even though there is plenty of memory, especially conventional memory, and it still just didn't work. I've had that Windows install for like, over two years and I'm, I'm kind of sad that I've lost it now. At least everything in DOS survived. In fact, getting DOS up and going was rather painless. Basically everything just worked. There was no conflicts, no nothing, so I don't know what happened with Windows, just it died somehow. And in the process of attempting to get Windows to work, I just decided to move the DOS installation over to this 8 gig compact flash card since I figured no better time to do it when things were already kind of broken. So what upgrade video would be complete without some before and after benchmarks? Of course I used the same settings between the different CPUs. The only difference hardware-wise other than the CPU, motherboard, and RAM is that I did the Pentium benchmarks with the compact flash card instead of the hard drive, but that really shouldn't impact the performance in any meaningful way. In 3D Bench, the 5x86 scored 77.3 and the Pentium 133 got 127.6. So that's quite the big gap between them. 
Chris's 3D bench at 320 x 240, 56.4 for the 5x86, and 94.4 for the P133, and Chris's 3D bench at 640 x 480, the 5x86 got 13.2, and the P133 got 24.1. So we can see the upgrade is already giving us massive improvements. In Doom, the 5x86 got 42.9 FPS, and the P133 got 65.17 FPS. Not quite as big of a gap as I was expecting, but I think Doom prefers clock speed over just architectural improvements. Doom was playable on both CPUs anyways, since it's capped at 35 FPS, so I really wasn't expecting to gain anything in Doom. Now, Quake at 320 x 200, the 5x86 only scored 14.2 FPS, and the P133 got 35.7. You could get Quake to run a little bit better on the 5x86. If you shrunk the screen down, you could get it to about 18 or so FPS, but it was still just not that enjoyable. It is so much better on the Pentium, and I'm sure Quake alone is the reason why so many people wanted a Pentium back in the day. Speedsys really shows just how big of an architectural improvement there is between the CPUs. The 5x86 got 50.04, and the P133 got 98.18. That's almost a 2x increase in performance. And keep in mind, both of these CPUs are clocked at 133 MHz. That is purely architectural gains on the side of the Pentium. And maybe the faster memory helps a little bit as well, but this is mostly down to just the Pentium being way more advanced architecturally. And PC player benchmark at 320 x 240, 20.2 for the 5x86 and 38.6 for the P133. And the same test at 640 x 480, 6.7 for the 5x86 and 11.9 for the P133. I couldn't find a way to turn on a frame rate counter in Descent. I think Descent 2 has a frame rate counter, but I haven't been able to get that game to run on either version of my DOS machine yet. So I'm just running the first demo in Descent 1 on both machines, and as you can see just from the side by side comparison, the Pentium is running the game much more smoothly. Duke 3D was already playable at 320x240 on the 5x86, but it is a lot smoother on the Pentium, and the Pentium can actually run the game somewhat decently at 640x480. It's still not perfect, it dips below 30fps a lot, so I'll stick with 320x240, but still it's nice that it can do it, where the 5x86 really struggled at 640x480. It appears that I forgot to record footage of Need for Speed on the 5x86, but it runs a lot better on the Pentium. I can actually run it at 640x480, and I can actually see what I'm doing. I chose to run it at 640x480 in interlaced mode, which I think is a nice balance between performance and frame rate. Overall, I'm very happy with the benchmarks, and this is exactly the kind of gains that I was expecting to see from the upgrade. See from the upgrade. So now that we've looked at some benchmarks and compared it to the old 5x86, do I think the upgrade was worth it? Well, yeah. Looking at the performance, I mean, it was basically doubled in some games. And overall, it's just a more modern platform to work with. There's less limitations. So I am happy that I've done the upgrade. It's something I've wanted to do for months now, and I'm just now finally getting around to doing it. And aside from Windows just totally dying, everything else went exactly how I planned it. So at least some of it went pretty well. I haven't gotten Windows reinstalled and running on here yet. Hopefully, I will be able to get it working again. So in the meantime, I'm just going to have to rock regular DOS, which... I mean, people did it back in the day, so I guess I'll do it now. Alright, so thank you guys for watching. I hope you found the upgrade interesting. Uh, this is pretty much as far as I want to take this machine, at least for now. Now that I have the compact flash card in there and I could easily swap OS's if I want, might experiment around with some Windows 95 stuff, especially if I maybe got a Voodoo card? If I could ever find one for a reasonable price. But as it stands now, I think this is pretty much my ideal, uh all-rounder DOS machine. I would like to build other DOS machines in the future, specifically slower ones. Alright, so I'll see you guys next time.